You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Hockey Talkie. If you have a champagne bottle that you're planning on opening tonight for New Year's Eve, you best go get another one because you're going to be popping that one right now because Chicago Blackhawks have traded Brandon Manning. Yes, the Blackhawks have traded Brandon Manning. We don't have to deal with him anymore. Not only have the Blackhawks just beaten the Wild and the Avalanche two-game winning streak, against the vision of foes. But now this, this is such a great way to end 2018. Such a great way. It's a good day for Blackhawks Nation and therefore the world. Now, when I saw the news that Brandon Manning had been traded late last night, I was tired because I had two beer league games. That's why I also didn't do a video last night. So apologies that this is kind of coming out fairly late. But when I saw that news, I had mixed emotions. I was obviously filled with joy, but I was also pretty scared because all I could think about was what else did Stan Bowman have to include to get rid of this $2.25 million per year, two-year deal that is Brandon Manning. And I was scared because of just history. But then I saw that we traded with the Edmonton Oilers and whoo, whoo, all I felt was relief because we got to trade with Peter Chiarelli who is somehow, someway, worse at trades than Stan Bowman. So the full trade is the Blackhawks sending Brandon Manning, who has been a healthy scratch for the past decade, it seems, and Robin Norrell, a left-handed defenseman who played for Rockford last year, but didn't make the club this year. So he's been playing over in Sweden. He's 23 years old. He probably was never going to make the Blackhawks. Nothing really lost there. So those two players get set to Edmonton, and in exchange, the Oilers send Jason Garrison, who is a seventh defenseman, but he'll probably be just down in Rockford for his entirety uh, with the Blackhawks organization. And then also Drake Kajula, who is a pretty decent bottom line guy. He's got good hustle, good forechecking ability. He can score at times. At times, he's pretty inconsistent at scoring, but, I mean, our entire bottom line is inconsistent scoring so is what it is so early signs early review on paper this trade it looks like the Blackhawks are getting the better end of the deal and after this past offseason when I was completely perplexed that we signed Brandon Manning for not only 2.25 million dollars per year but for two years I mean the fact that we were able to get rid of them and come out on top of that deal like, that blows my mind a little bit. You got to give Stan credit for cutting his losses and, and upgrading uh, with the trade. It's, it's a surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Now, the Edmonton Oilers side of this deal is actually the more interesting side. Apparently, the Oilers were gunning for Manning this past offseason as well, so that's kind of insane to me. But they apparently got their man. But the real interesting part is the fact that Manning was the guy who broke Connor McDavid's collarbone during Connor McDavid's rookie season, which completely derailed his rookie season, where he probably would have gone on to win Rookie of the Year. But he didn't. He got injured for a while and missed a good chunk of the season, and now they're going to be teammates. Now, the hit itself that broke Connor McDavid's collarbone really wasn't a dirty or intentional hit. It wasn't like a check or anything. Basically, McDavid had the puck, Zoomed by Brandon Manning because, of course, he did. Brandon Manning trying to keep up, trying to prevent him from getting a shot. His awfulness kind of created a situation where they both kind of lost their edge and they both went crashing into the boards. Now, McDavid crashed into the boards and Brandon Manning uh, crashed into, well, Connor McDavid. And that squishing action created the broken collarbone. Now, a lot of people were upset that Brandon Manning didn't apologize for the hit or seemed unapologetic. And, I mean... I can't really blame him. It was unintentional. It's not like he tried to hurt him. It's just his awfulness kind of created that situation. But the fact of the matter is that, well, Connor McDavid is one of, if not the best players in the NHL, and it doesn't really matter if it's intentional or not. 
if you create a situation where you break a star player's you know bone or you know put them out for months at a time during the season, people are not going to be happy about it. Now, McDavid, he's probably fine with it now. He probably is all right with being teammates with Brandon Manning. But, of course, McJesus is going to forgive. It's not him that Brandon Manning has to convince in that locker room. It's the rest of the team. And it's not like Brandon Manning is an elite defenseman that's coming in that's really going to help your team get over that hump. There's a little bit of forgiveness if that's the case. But that's not the case. So it's going to be really interesting uh, how that locker room dynamic is going to work out. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say. As you can tell, I'm pretty darn happy about this, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this trade. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always. Apologies for how late this video came out. I never claim to be perfect. But tomorrow, Winter Classic. Cam Ward getting the start. And just a reminder, I'm going to be doing a live stream during it, so come hang out. Come join me. Talk some Blackhawks hockey. Talk some whatever. And enjoy another outdoor game. So until then, stay safe, make good decisions, especially tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow.